Konnichiwa viewers, welcome to another episode of Kyoto by Night, The Second Breath. Tonight we are again looking in on Pink Fox as she is going to once again work on tying up some loose threads. Uh, she did get a notification that the search string that they had engineered a few weeks ago has managed to actually track down the property that uh, Koharu is uh, residing on. Uh, it is in a rural territory uh, between the villages of Seika and Wazuka, which is south of Kyoto. Um, and uh, aside from that update, um, what else do we have going on in Pink Fox's life? Well, and you'll have to forgive me as I'm uh little uh, sick as I mentioned before the uh, scene started. There's a lot of things that have been going through Pink Fox's mind over the last month or so. Uh, one thing in particular was the thing which Ogawa had said to her. Show me your poem. Naturally, um, one could always uh, interpret this as, you know, literally, show me your poem. Um, by way of uh, Demon Shintai, but uh, you know, not really knowing that particular discipline, it's not really something that uh, Pink Fox can really you know, manifest at this point. Um, you know, the other idea would be to you know try and invoke a Shadow Soul, but you know that's kind of a bit detrimental, and there's no telling what might happen. Um, the only other idea Pink Fox had was to describe it in some shape or form, you know, in written form, and something that she took, uh, <coughs> she took more than a few weeks to try and, you know, write it out, you know, she had, she's not very expressive, you know, quite like a, like, like a lot of uh, Japanese people, as a matter of fact, but, um, you know, she put pen to paper um, several times throughout the several weeks, you know, wrote something, went off, went, came back to it, edited it, whatever, and now it's eventually come to something that she thinks probably would be um, an interesting way to describe how she sees her poem. Because after all, it's always the, uh, as uh, Ogawa had mentioned, the darker reflection of one's own self. Okay. On um, that case then, I will let you roll intelligence and expression uh, if you've got uh, specialization for poetry in that that'll apply uh, and it'll be standard difficulty nope um, as we said we said this is extended role so yes first time <coughs> okay okay so is how many how so it's been, been, I say we'd get three rolls here. Okay. One success. Okay. Uh, two successes on the extended roll. Okay. Pretty simple-ish. Yeah. yeah, but she's pouring her herself into it. <laughs> mm. Alrighty. It's, more, it's probably going to be more in the delivery than in anything else for her. All right. Well, then let's uh, let's see how she does with the delivery. Mm. And yeah, uh, once she decides to uh, go, uh, you know, she makes arrangements to go see Ogawa, um, you know, beforehand. Um, maybe by the same means, maybe by you know, just saying, you know. Um, I know where um, I need to go. Um, you know, can I take it? Can I take a taxi cab there, and etc. Okay. Um, yeah, you're able to make. I mean, the night you reach out, he's not going to be free, but he does make uh, himself available. Um, and yeah, you have uh, you have his permission to come visit him back at his estate. So, you again. Have its handmaiden greet you at the doorway. 
Hello. He's uh, expecting you. It's uh, Masami, wasn't it? Mayumi? Masami, yes. Oh, sorry. You are Thanks. alone again, I see. Yeah. Um, kind of a private type deal thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Um, I will try and get Tomei to come if I come here next time, but, you know, he's always really busy these days. Well, and, you know, we do have... We do have waiting rooms for guests if you require private time with Master Ogawa. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's not... Uh, it would not be considered a... Well... It wouldn't be something that would bother Ogawa if you happened to have your Ru with you when you came to visit, even if they just came and waited in the next room. Mm -hmm. But uh, he is actually uh, in the study right now. Um, I will take you there. And she'll turn and start heading down the hallway going through the drawing room with uh, Koharu's creepy painting, uh, but taking a different turn than the one that she had previously, uh, instead of heading out into the garden area. She leads you down a hallway, and you can hear sounds coming from down the hallway. And uh, she gets to uh, an entryway and just kind of stands to the side to allow you to pass by. And Pink Fox, you know, naturally, um, you yeah. know, she like uh, takes a look into the uh, into the passageway uh, first, just to check to see if Ogawa's there, and you know, okay. say hello, and then you know, ask, uh, can I come in? There's, uh, <coughs> it's a it's a large den that is a few steps down from the hallway. Um, there is. Uh, seating uh, however the middle of the room has actually been cleared and Ogawa is standing there with a big screen TV on one wall and he appears to be playing some sort of sports game on a Wii with uh, two preteen children the three of them each have a controller and they're playing video games hmm. yeah that's totally not creepy at all. Yeah, see the way Pink Fox will, you know, come down quietly and presuming that these, well, in my head I've got several possibilities. I mean, uh, I mean I'm not saying that uh, Devil Tigers don't create damp here. Yeah. Um, he'll, uh, they'll wait until it's, uh, it's actually hockey, the video game that they're playing. Um, and uh, they have a team of the two kids against him. And when the kids score a goal, he uh, chuckles and uh, pauses the game and acknowledges you with a head nod. And then, all right, now children, go with Masami-san. She will uh, ensure you get home safely. Thanks for the game we will have a rematch and he'll give them friendly high fives. And uh, as the kids scurry out of the room, you'll actually notice that Wasami has actually put a bit of a cloth over her mouth to conceal the, uh, the aberrant face that she has. And the three of them leave and he'll gesture to one of the uh, recliners and, will sit down himself. And to what do I owe this visit, Pink Fox? Pink Fox, you know, naturally she stays quiet throughout this um, whole thing because, you know, given what she's already seen of um, Ogawa, and given what she's you know, heard of certain devil tigers, this does come across as a little bit well, in her, her eyes being quite inexperienced when it comes to these, 
to the uh, whole philosophy of the devil tiger at uh, the howl of the devil tiger a little bit uncharacteristic that you know she assumes that there's a method to the madness there and she kind of you know you know half um half reach half reaches to the um like little pocket where the little uh note um little poem as it were uh, was in um well, I thought a lot about uh, what you had told me uh, last time that I'd come here. And, well, you know, when you said, show me your Poe, I kind of assumed that you didn't, you know, had a, had a, like, you didn't want me to interpret that literally. You know, because not everyone has the demon Shintai discipline. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, so you you have another way that you would like to uh, show me? Excellent. Just a moment, actually. Uh, could I get you something to drink? A uh, haposhu? Um, thank you. He'll uh, go to... Uh, the bar at the back and get a bottle of uh, Hapashu, open it and hand it to you as he sits down with one himself. Yeah, Pink Fox will like take the, uh, the bottle of Hapashu, you know, sure. Take a light sip of it, you know, just to <coughs> just to check, you know. It's a low probably. malt beer. Yeah. I was going to ask what was Hapashu. Yeah, uh, it, it's Hapashu. a it's a it's a type of low malt. Well, it's it's a type of beer that's basically it, Hapashu is Japanese for sparkling alcohol, so it's uh it's a light flavored beer, um, and uh, actually is somewhat treated as pop in a lot of ways. <laughs> well, as I recall, uh, Russia until like the end of the end of the Soviet Union considered beer to be a soft drink. Yeah. So it, it, this this beer kind of has those connotations as well. So it's not like it's not like heavy beer, but it's uh, it's kind of more of a, a relaxing kind of uh, drink to have. So yeah, once she's done that, Pink Fox will like place the little bottle um, by the. I mean, assuming that there's like a like a uh, like a table or something with a coaster on it. Yeah, yeah. There's there's something there for for you there for that. Yeah, yeah. She'll place it on there because you know politeness, and you know, she'll kind of unfold the uh, piece of paper. <coughs> I'm really sorry about this, but fucking hell. Well, I'm not very good at you know describing things. You know, like. In like written form or anything like that, but I thought of something here which I thought could probably describe how I see my own poem. Because, you know, like you said, it manifests for everyone differently. You know, she like finds out the crinkles in the piece and uh, she begins uh, to recite it as best she can, you know. The fox is the most sweetest creature in the world. The fox is the most beautiful, the most cunning, the most kindness, the most talented. The fox enriches the lives of all around her. But she lies. She lies about having enough money. She lies that she isn't tired. She lies about how hungry she is. She lies that she has everything. She lies about her happiness. She lies because she sees both sides. She lies because she doesn't know who to trust. She lies because she knows nothing but her curse. 
She lies because of me. I am the fox. And she just kind of like, semi bashfully kind of like, folds the uh, paper over. Okay. Uh, I'll get you to make a uh, charisma expression roll. Uh, this is not going to be good. <coughs> uh, can I spend a will for this? Yes, because especially with uh, um, how uh, nervous that she seems to be about. Yeah. So I can see that. Three. Okay. Hmm. So what is it that the fox wants? I'd say maybe answers. Maybe everything that a thrashing dragon would want. You know, when you're, well, it's like kind of like how it says. When you see the world from both sides, you know, both sides of a conflict that, you know, up until you died and resurrected, you didn't even know existed. You know, when you don't know anything, you, know, you want to fill it with anything. You know, with love, with hate. anything hmm. it's really hard to describe but you know you know what you want you can't describe it but you know it when you see it so if the fox lies to get answers does the fox know if the answers it gets are lies I was kind of hoping that you'd tell me. <laughs> but this was for you to tell me about, to show me your po, to show me what it is that drives you, your passions. Well, Though you I have more passions than others. It's not like Yoshi, where his po is all his passion. You've got passion of your own. Your hun has passion. But I think the difference between the passions that I have, that my hun has, and the passions that my po has is the means, maybe, that they're willing to, to use to indulge in them. Hmm. Maybe. Well, then the trick is to find the way for your passions to coincide so there's no conflict. I think your poem, while it wouldn't impress any bone flowers is adequate in expressing what your your po really is right now as it is still young and weak itself so you came up with a creative way a different way because you didn't want to have to wait for the way that I, the face value of what I had asked. That in itself is impressive as well. It is good on you. 
you are perhaps finding your way yet after all. There were some other things that I wanted to ask you as well about House Genji. Well, I, I assumed so, that part of your rush to <coughs> complete this task was to further the conversation. So very well, what, what questions do you have? How were they formed and what do they want? House Genji? Ah, uh, well, the modern House Genji was formed from those that saw the signs of the wheel turning, knowing that the Fifth Age is quickly drawing to a close, and not seeing the harsh stoicism of House Bishimon as being anything that was going to uh, survive. In this modern day and age, we need to be ready to accept what the Sixth Age is going to put upon us, or we won't survive. There are some in House Bishimon that remember the Fifth Age arriving, and they seem to not realize that the Sixth Age is here or will be as tumultuous as it was for them back then. They were young, like us, at that time, and they seem to think, well, they survived it. They'll survive this turning. If we're fortunate, we can be just as disillusioned when the Seventh Age arrives. There was a Seventh... Huh? No. No, the turning of the wheel. The Sixth Age is not the end of everything. There will be another... Things will start going back. In theory, the Seventh Age should be a transition back to something similar to what we are living in right now. And it'll slowly get better from there until we are once again managed to unite ourselves as one with he the heavens. At least that's how I've heard scholars discuss it. In all actuality, right now, all that is really important is what we are doing and what we are doing to prepare for whatever changes may come. House Genji is prepared, House Bishimon is not. How long have you been a member of House Genji? Pretty much since I, uh, well, since I was a running monkey. It was not as prevalent then, but the uh, court that I ended up settling down in was of House Genji. So that is how we were able to induce this open detente, or however you want to phrase it, that uh, Kisaragi has going on in Kyoto is a attempt at Bishimon to try to do something new or something different. And I am taking advantage of that opportunity to be able to perhaps help guide others towards the right way. But you're... When Sosin said that you were the only member of House Genji in Kyoto that she knew of, I assumed that, you know, that kind of meant that there were some, I don't know, 
sleeper agents? Some Pri prior to my arrival, they had a few instances where there were some members of House Genji attempting to infiltrate the city through less obvious methods. Um, excuse me. As well, I think it would be foolish of her since she had lived through the time of the Black Kites when they thought they had totally eradicated House Genji only to have us arise again. I think she is wise enough to know that you can't just <coughs> assume that you know everything about everybody around you. What happened to them? I mean, the infiltrators, the ones who tried to infiltrate. Um, the ones that tried to infiltrate, I believe the first few were granted the opportunity to uh, ask for forgiveness during the rising of the sun. The uh, others, I think there were some that ended up fleeing. And I think that there were some that did not accept the offer of an open dialogue that was presented to them. My predecessor for this post was uh, not one to uh, waste time with dialogue. How long ago was this? A <sighs> couple decades. I think the last one I heard of was at least the last one that I knew of was maybe about five years before I came here. So uh, maybe around the turn of the century. Do you think that House Genji might still have sleeper agents? <sighs> well, if we did, I wouldn't tell you about them. Unless I was a member of House Genji. I understand. Or, you know, even then. Why the interest? Where where do you find you and your Wu standing? My understanding is is you seem to have a much stronger grasp of the new mortals' uh, way of doing things than uh, than how Bishamon normally does. See, that's the thing. You know, we're only a local Wu. And to be quite honest, I don't think any of us really know anything about the whole political situation between the different houses in Japan. Um, and I know there's Bishamon, I know there's Genji. Um, I know there's some like other houses as well, I think. But... Um, Yeah, there are there are a few. And some of them, some of them are so uh, un uh, unknown that they're practically a woo <coughs> and not a house. But there is uh, there are some other houses. But for the most part, Bishamon and Genji are those that rule any courts that I've ever been in. Well, you know, in our case, even if we were interested in, like, you know, officially joining a house, wouldn't we need kind of like a sponsor or, you know, someone to, you know, have the whole passing of the sake to? 
Uh, it depends. Uh, there is some uh, pomp and ceremony. Um, something basically you just would need somebody of House Genji who would be able to or willing to vouch for uh, your uh, admission. Uh, House Bishimon, I'm sure, has a lot more uh, restrictions if you want to be legitimized within their house. Um, for our part, I mean, if you prove yourself capable and are willing, then uh, we'll, we'll celebrate and accept you. And as long as you prove your worth and prove your loyalty, then things will be well for you. But I, I, I would have to say that I, I think your Wu has a lot more in common with, uh, with House Genji than that of the Bishimon. I've heard you've got an uh, electronic uh, spirit as your Nushi. Yeah, fellow Ru 7. And uh, Waru has told me that Yoshi seems quite gifted and uh, comfortable with computers and other forms of technology. He's more comfortable with him than he probably is with, you know, other things. I still tease him about that threesome that he had with, um, you know, Masami and uh, Suzu. Uh, and I'm sure the two of them wouldn't let him forget it either give, if they were given the opportunity. Mm. I do get a bit jealous of him, though. I mean, look at me. I'm the thrashing dragon, and he's the one that had a threesome. Well, I'm sure then you should find a way to uh, goad a little bit more activity out of him. Mm. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure that the thrashing dragons in your woo could find a, <coughs> an excuse for it to be part of a a woo bonding or a training exercise yeah, of I did some kind. kind. Yeah, I did kind of think that at first, but, you know, I didn't think that uh, Tommy really liked girls. Um, well, it'd be uh, enlightening for Akira, I'm sure, then. Yeah, maybe for Akira, but... I don't know. He's kind of... His passions are really kind of weird. I mean, he's, kind of, he's not exactly repressed about them, but I think he's just trying to come into his own. You know, it's kind of like how we said to um, to Sosin, uh, you know, during the whole introduction where, uh, yeah. Uh, we're both east-facing thrashing dragons, but we come from two different walks of life. So, I don't know, maybe he... Just needs a bit more encouragement. Well, I'm sure you'll find a way to do that. I'm sure you will. Or he'll motivate himself, you know. He's not going to stay uh, in one place for very long, you know, literally or figuratively. That is true. Well, I feel those are, are things that are of utmost concern to you. Um, how is your uh, duties for the court going on? Uh, not so bad. Um, Sosin hasn't really mentioned anything that she needs of me, but I'm going to be doing some things to get this whole, uh, you know, uh, Minister of the Floating Gardens thing up and running probably within this month. Um Assuming that our prior, you know, obligations don't interfere with us. Uh, um, I think I told you about that Tomei told us about the whole thing with the broken mirror. Yes. Um, I've been a little bit curious about that, but uh, I have not been able to hear too much from my sources. Though... Uh, Kingu-san seems to have uh, some convincing. Sometimes when he is he's less lucid, he does go on about a uh, 
horrible room. Yeah. But uh, its location seems to be a little nebulous. Yeah. This is what... Uh... <coughs> Fucking hell, sorry about that. Uh, this is what me and Tomei think might be the case. Masaru and his sister, as well as a few other people, they used to get brought to this room. Uh, you know, at, at weird times. And we think it might be a portal to Yami, or some Yami realm. You know. Um, Masaru is convinced that if he kills his sister, then, you know, the portal to this um, Yami realm will close forever. In fact, you know that, um, you know that painting? You know, the one that you have um, in your corridor? Yes, it's interesting that that is his sister's handiwork. Yeah. <sighs> Do you know how many copies there are of that picture? Um, I don't know if there's any prints that have been made. I know she's made other paintings of a similar theme. But I'm not sure exactly how many off the top of my head. I hadn't really given that much thought. Mm. Well... Where did you buy yours? Hmm. I've had it for a couple of years. I'd have to, I'd have to get somebody to check to see exactly where I'd acquired it from. It was, uh, I don't know, either an art shop or or something. I just remember seeing it and liking it, so I got it. it seemed like a good investment. It had some sort of tainted perspective that I could appreciate. Yeah, kind of noticed that. <coughs> um, my Wu found a copy of you know that exact same painting in um, you know Kyoto Station when we first found Masaru. Uh, you might want to speak to. Tome about the entire story about that. I mean, he did try and... I think he called someone to try and buy it. Might have been Kakusha. I mm. don't know. Okay. Well, next time I see Yoshi, I'll give that some consideration. I know that uh, he is currently supposed to be on the watch for any new Chime into the city. And uh, I know that Fu has some suspicions and concerns that she is looking into as well for me. So we will see uh, what what comes about. But uh, yes, if you guys do manage to pin down more specifics on this broken mirror, that would be a very good idea. What's we cannot, if you don't mind me asking. We cannot afford any incursions from Yomi. Oh, well, she has, she has suspicions of her own that she is, uh, she has, uh, not not of House Genji, but she does have concerns that we may be facing uh, Kinjin presence in the city. Kinjin? Yes. In, like, Western, Western vampires, you know, Dracula, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, she thinks there might be a Dracula or two in the city that... Uh, is uh, she's trying to keep an eye out for it. Um, or at least, if not that, perhaps the Nekuma 
it's a little bit difficult at this time. Musashi seems to think that the Kinjin theory is correct. However, it could just as easily be an Akuma, which would not necessarily be unusual if we have a broken mirror spitting yeah. things out. But there was a new, uh, there was a new disciple in the city that encountered a beast that sounded like something that got spit up from hell. So specifics of which I don't really recognize, but hell is a very large place. I'm sure there's things that none of us have ever heard of. If I do hear anything, and I do mean anything. I'll send you a message as soon as possible. Should probably have a word for Sashi san about this as well. Okay. Just give me a quick second. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm so sick. Sorry about that. Um, oh, excellent. I appreciate that support, Fox, and being the one that interacts with the mortal populace. I suppose you probably might hear more rumors than others. Oh, and it looks like Jason might have froze when I had to step away. Hello. Hello. There we go. Yes. Looks like you you froze when I had to step away. Yeah, I dropped out um, just just a, just a half a minute ago. Okay. So she had said that she was going to pass on any information. Say again? Uh, Pink Fox had said that she was going to pass on any information she came across. And he, uh, he had acknowledged that uh, with her responsibilities tending to the mortal populace, she probably would be aware of suspicious activities before a lot of the others. I think, um, I think that's all I really need to um, 
and form me up. Thing that you feel that I should know before, um, you know, before I go. Well, not that I'm necessarily aware of either, but uh, job well done on expressing your po. And uh, should you and your boo seek to ally yourself with our house, I'd be more than happy to host a proper welcome to the four of you, or even just some of you. I'll get their own view on it first. I don't think it would be fair for, you know, any of us, we, we, democracy as it were, you know, no one's the real leader, you know, some of us speak a lot louder, you know, me, Akira, sometimes Yukiko if she's uh, angry. Well, that is the new way of things, right? Away with the feudalism. <coughs> Yeah. Come together and discuss things as a group instead of just arbitrarily throwing stuff down. Perhaps we may find a court like that someday too. I've heard rumors of courts in the past where instead of having one ancestor, it was just the group of mandarins that just convened and didn't necessarily have one stand over the others. Of course, those could just be rumors. Wow. Or that may have been the way of the old Genji and the Bishimon have obscured the facts of the matter. But again, it is good to have the opportunity to speak with you, Pink Fox. You who are out in the world that much more. now armed with a little bit more knowledge. Yes, yes. And if you need any tips on uh, growing your financing, just, I would be more than happy to provide you with some assistance. There was one thing. I recently overheard that um, the club where I work is um, going to be, well, it's going to have new owners. I mean, they're, they're most likely going to like keep people, you know, um, you know, who've been working there for years, you know, still on, you know, it's just the way that things do that. But I don't know too much about how to, you know, run businesses right now. I don't want to learn. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll be managing that club instead of dancing in it. Well, that definitely has growth opportunities. Mm -hmm. I uh, is a bit of a focus of mine. After all, nothing is quite as evil as corporate life. <laughs> <laughs> consumer culture and all that yeah well and i think actually for my dharma everybody should spend at least a couple decades as a lawyer too you know just so you know what it's like to be fully evil um but uh well if you uh if like i said if you'd like i uh can provide you with some advice if you uh has the sale gone through, or is it just somebody is looking into it? Uh, last I checked, um, my boss told me that uh, the new, that basically the old owners were trying to get a better price from the new owners. I'm going to go check to see if anything's changed. But, you know, if um, things have, uh, if things are stalled, who knows, maybe... Uh, 
maybe me and my Wu can probably meet with the old owners and we can probably get maybe we can get some uh, a loyalty sale out of it that's smart thinking besides with what you told us about you know the kinjin in the city if they're i don't I mean, how much like us are they not at all actually oh, so they, to be honest, oh, so I, I haven't I haven't encountered them <laughs> much myself. Um, it's rumored that Musashi has a bit of more knowledge from uh, when he uh, rode with the Great Khan, but um, other than the vague myths and legends about the traitor Zeolat, there's not really much that I could tell you from personal experience. Um, I presume they're nocturnal. I presume that they, uh, well, I've heard that they are unenlightened, uh, so must feast on the flesh of the kill. So that might make it a little bit easier to track them down. I think, I think Jason froze up again. Okay, we'll give a moment, see if Jason comes back. Some technical difficulties for sure. And I'm just going to check and see. Oh, there we go. Apologies again. No problem. Uh, I'll carry on from where I've left off, if you can still hear me. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Well, assuming they are us, like us, they kind of do the same things. Do you think... It's likely that they'll try to find, you know, create some sort of an influence humanity. Well, I presume that they, they do. I presume that they uh, will try to fumble about and manipulate mortals. They are uh, dangerous and uh, unenlightened. So that's pretty much all I've heard of them. They are like cockroaches, a kuma that just kind of, once one gets in the door, the rest all spread. But if you're I'm not saying it, see, see, <coughs> their, see their influence amongst the mortals or see anything else that could indicate their presence. Please make sure your Wu passes that along to uh, little Fu as uh, she is supposed to be the one that is dealing with such things and it would be a shame if she failed in that regard. Mm -hmm. Not saying uh, anything, but if I do find something in the sale of this club, would you mind if I sent a uh, message to you personally, right on this night? I I would have no problem at receiving a a message. Okay. Well, 
I'll uh, thanks for the uh, thanks for allowing me to speak and thanks for the beer. Mm-hmm. She takes another sip from the beer that she really hasn't touched in this entire conversation. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly. All right, I will get you to roll your yang as between writing and presenting and discussing your poem. This is a chance for enlightenment. Uh, Difficulty is your willpower. (coughs) Three successes. Well, Den strikes and you start getting, as you're walking down the hall and out back to the uh, yard, you're just filled with a stronger sense of purpose, a little bit more excitement as your place in the court becomes that much more clearer. Finally. <laughs> we knew that there was, this was all those failed roles were leading to something. It's leading to something. Mm-hmm. Dharma rank four. Yinna. I'm putting you up into the big leagues now. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Despite being sick. Uh, okay, after that, you know, Pink Fox is going to. Um, do what she uh, said that she would do for uh, Ogawa. She would go to her club. You know. She has to check it out and to see if she can't uh, well overhear or you know coax it out of her colleagues or a boss or anything about uh, who these new boss or bosses is, perhaps. Maybe. <coughs> okay. Um, it would actually be very easy because um, it's going to be the point of gossip and especially like it, it's almost redundant to get you to make any kind of rules. So just because of where it is and what the nature is, you're going to get this information pretty easily. Um, so uh, give me a second here. And and I'll get this information for you before we end scene. Then you can see what you can do with that. Um, It would be Kuzeko Securities is the name of the company i'll put in the chat here as the company is looking to make the purchase Uh and the and right now they've had some guys come by earlier that day before there was customers um that we're kind of you know looking things over um they are in the negotiations um right uh so there's a little bit of back and forth going on um i will get you to do a manipulation um manipulation subterfuge Uh, depending on the diff, that's either two successes or three successes. Okay. Um, so you will actually also be able to get from your boss the um, the date and time uh, that they are actually going to be meeting um, for, I guess, final negotiations. So right now it's been kind of just kind of feeling each other out, having some conversations or so, but they're actually having a meeting meeting in a few days where they're going to be basically, hey, we want this place. What, what, what's going on here? What like, is this going to be a yes or a no kind of a thing? So, 
and that information I will provide for Pink Fox so she and her Wu can decide what they want to do with that info. And at that, we've had a very auspicious evening, despite the technical difficulties. Yes, and despite my sickness. <laughs> Sorry so, for the coughing, uh, folks. No problem. Uh, maybe, maybe, balance. yeah, I was going to say, maybe she's getting yang in balance. She caught a cold from somebody at work. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it's just a cold. Um, anyway, we will uh, say sayonara to you guys. Have a good night. Sayonara.